morning. Topic today is going to be how to take a soil sample and soil auditing or testing is one of the few tools we really have to assess the nutritional or the ability of our soil to provide nutrition to the crop and to determine other conditions and circumstances we may have with the soil. Now to get a good soil audit it is only, to go, only going to be as reliable as the sample that you take, which is going to have to be representative and taken correctly. And that starts with the tools that we need for sampling. You will need first a basic tool for drawing the soil from uh, a soil sample from your field. Uh, the most common tool is a soil probe. I'm holding one right here. This is, oh, probably the Ford model. It's a pretty standard type of soil probe. You can spend a lot more money on them. Soil probes can run in price from around $35, $40, well up into several hundred dollars. So you want to know what you need and how good a model you need. I have an inexpensive one here probably costs in the range of $35 or $40. Yeah. If you don't have or choose not to buy a soil probe, you can use a shovel to take your sample. In addition to something to take the soil sample with, you're going to need a bucket, a good clean one, you will need something like a trowel or a stout spoon to mix the sample. You might also be wanting something like a plastic knife or uh, a screwdriver, something of that nature. And I'll explain why you need those in a few minutes. But all of these tools need to be clean. They need to be non-rusty. You can imagine if you have a rusted trowel and you mix that sample, you're going to get flakes of rust into your soil sample. And an analysis for iron or some of the other metals that would be found in, a rust, in rust are going to compromise the results of your soil test. So from here we'll go and demonstrate how to use the tools, how to actually pull a sample from the field. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how you take a soil sample using a probe. And it's really quite simple. This is not rocket science. I will take the end of the probe and sort of scratch away at the surface of soil if there's any uh, crop residue or as we have here, grass on the surface. I want to have as little of that surface mulch in my sample as possible. So I clear a small spot and I step the probe down into the ground. And pull out, you can see a nice sample that we call a core. Now ideally, I want these cores to be between six and seven inches in length. And this one nicely, uh, let me move this here so you can see a little closer. That is nicely about six and a half, seven inches in length. Reason for this, uh, and this is important to understand, when soil labs do their analyses and make their recommendations, they're working on several assumptions. And that is that you are taking your soil sample from what's called the acre furrow slice. And what that is, is the depth of about six to seven inches. The name comes from uh, the days when it was pretty standard to use a turning plow. And a turning plow would go six to seven inches in depth. And where this is additionally important, if you can visualize an acre, and best way to do that 
is to walk off a square of about 200 to 210 feet on each side and look at that size that's roughly an acre of ground if you took the six to seven inches across that whole acre you would have two million pounds of soil and that's an important number and visualize this you are going to send in a sample that probably weighs one to two pounds of soil going into the lab you are basically asking that lab to give you information on your whole acre based on a sample that is about one millionth or less of that piece of ground. Hi. Um, the soil sample as I've taken, as I pointed out, is exactly uh, six and a half inches, which is perfect. I want at this point to put that into a bucket or another clean container so that it can be mixed with other soil cores that I'm going to be taking. Now a little hint, you want to take your soil samples when the conditions of the field are very good. When there's good moisture in the ground, but not so much that you can't walk in there. It's truly muddy you don't but if the soil is very hard and very dry you're going to find that you can't drive this probe very far into the ground and, and if you do it will often be only half full of soil because you're pushing the dry soil further down rather than actually filling the tube and you get a pretty poor sample under those conditions today out here we, we've had rains recently this ground is in very nice condition to sample. I'm going to show you a little trick. Remember I mentioned you might want a plastic knife or a good clean screwdriver. Main reason for that is to remove the core from the uh, probe. And you simply slide that knife or the screwdriver down to pull the soil out and put it in your bucket. Okay, go. Okay, you might notice I left a little bit of soil right here at the business end of the probe. I did that because actually conditions like we have today in this soil, I'm able to do that. Now, this is a little trick that'll make taking soil samples a bit easier. I could take my plastic knife and work that piece of soil out of there and put it in the sample and that's fine to do that but something that lets you go a little faster when conditions are very good like they are today I'm leaving that plug and I'm going to take another core just as I did before And if you'll note, when conditions are right, driving the probe into the ground again will just push that little plug back up. So I just have to make sure that I have gone in another six to seven inches in depth and let that little plug sit up there. And then the entire thing, again, can be taken and put into my sampling bucket. The whole goal is though that on each core that I take, I'm getting that six to seven inches in depth. But now I'm going to show how you can take a core using a shovel. If you don't have a soil probe and you want to use a shovel to take your, your sample, you dig a small hole, as you see I've done here, about seven to eight inches deep and you take your shovel making sure that you're starting right at the top of the hole and dig out a slice much as you see here and first of all we'll check it 
to see what our depth is on that. And yeah, we're seven and a half inches, so I'm just going to cut off a little bit from the bottom. And then I can take and cut myself a core. And there's my sample core, which I can then mix into the bucket. Now, how many of those samples I need? This is a sample bag from one of the laboratories that Kerr Center uses. And we're to fill that bag up to that line. So I try to get enough soil. It probably comes out to about uh, uh, one to two pounds of soil to mix into my bucket and I stir it up real well before pouring it into the bag. And again, that's why you need a very clean trowel, something that's not rusty, to mix your soil with. Go. Okay, the number of cores you take, as I said, should come out to providing you about one to two pounds of soil. I will typically on a, well my fields are about half an acre uh, to three quarter of an acre in size and I will probably take oh ten to a dozen soil cores. Now where I take those cores within a field is also important. If I go over to this spot right here, you probably can't see it well on the camera but there's actually a water line right under me. This ground had been dug up to put in that line. There's going to be subsoil mixed in it. This is not representative of the rest of my field. It's actually an anomaly. I would not want to take a core from a place like that. Representative is something different from random. Random means if I chose to take it on that spot, I would. Representative means uh, an ultimate sample that represents what the majority of your field is like. Just to illustrate a little further, I want you to notice there's a bit of a swale here on this field. You notice I've dropped down. I hope the cameras picked that up. This swale is also an anomaly on an otherwise flat field. And I'm not going to manage this swale any differently than I'm going to manage the rest of the field. I can't afford to take that many samples. So I would not take a sample here in the swale. I would take my sample elsewhere in the field that is typical or, like I said, representative of what the majority of the field is. And this is something that you're going to face when you're trying to decide how many soil samples you'll submit. I base the number of samples I take based on how many fields I feel that I can manage separately or distinctly. Wherever I am willing to change my fertilizer application. That's where I'll decide to take a soil sample. If it's too small to do that or I can't afford to take a large number of samples, I won't. I take only what I need. 